Hi friends, so far uh, in this uh, hydraulic excavator chapter, we talked about the evolution of the hydraulic excavators, then the critical parts involved and the basics of the hydraulics. Now onwards, we will be talking each and every critical component in detail. Now in this video, I will be talking about the axial piston pump that is variable displacement axial piston pump which is commonly used in the hydraulic excavators. This is the axial piston pump which is shown in this figure. The internal construction of the axial piston pumps looks like this. The majority of the construction machines like dozers, dumpers, wheel loaders, graders and of course the hydraulic excavators. All these machines are fitted with the axial piston pump. Because the axial piston pumps are compact in size and more efficient than the gear pump or the vane pump. The, the efficiency of the axial pistons will be more than 95%. Further, the life of the axial piston pumps will be much more than the other type of pumps like gear pump and vane pump. Precisely speaking, the type of pump used in the hydraulic excavator is called the variable displacement axial piston pump. It is not a simple axial piston pump. It is the variable displacement axial piston pump, which means the discharge of the pump varies depending upon the system's requirement. This animation shows the blue is the inlet for the pump and the red is the exhaust for the pump, outlet for the pump. So the outlet that is the volume, the outlet, ex the delivery volume of the fluid varies depending upon the system's requirement. That's why it is called the variable displacement axial piston pump. Why it was called axial piston pump? Certain set of pistons are arranged axially in a cylinder barrel housing. So the pumping action is done by the pistons with the translation movement of the set of pistons inside the barrel. That's why it is called the axial piston pump. Why it is variable displacement? Because the delivery or the discharge volume of the fluid varies depending upon the system requirement. How it varies? You can see this particular black one. This device is called the swash plate. It is arranged in a certain angle to the plane of this cylinder barrel. So because of this angle between the axis of this surface and this surface, the pumping action takes place. Observe this figure very carefully. So at the lowest piston, the gap between the piston top and the cylinder surface is very less. Okay. As the piston is moving or rotating, the space between the piston top and the cylinder is increasing. As this, you can see this blue. As the space is increased here, the vacuum is created inside the cylinder. Because of the pressure difference between the atmosphere and the vacuum inside the cylinder, the fluid from the outside is sucked or drawn inside the cylinder chamber. Once the piston on its rotation reaches top, the full amount of oil is drawn in this particular cylinder and as it continues to rotate further, whatever oil is drawn inside the cylinder, because of the forward movement of this piston, the oil will be pushed outside and it will go through the exhaust to pour to the system. So suction in the blue line increasing, increasing, increasing cylinder is filled and as the piston is moving, this pump, this oil is pushed outside. This is how suction and a delivery of the fluid takes place in this axial movement, in the S axial piston pump. How the discharge volume varies? If the angle between 
the this plane swash plate plane and the cylinder surface is increases so the discharge will increase because the space available to suck or to draw the oil inside the cylinder chamber will be more as the angle between these two surfaces decreases the discharge volume also minimizes this particular change of angle between these two planes okay, is governed by a device called a governor again this governor works with response to the resistance or the pressure from the working system in case in the working system the pressure is developed then pressure acts on this particular wall and this is pushed against this spring pressure and as this is attached to this swash plate the swash plate is pulled left side causing the reduction in the angle reduce reduction in the delivery of the fluid as the pressure is reduced in the system the spring pressure pushes this rod forward making to push this swash plate increasing the angle thus increasing the delivery we will look into the critical parts of this pump the pump will act like this construction this gray one is the housing which holds all the parts and this is the cylinder block the number of cylinders may be 7 or 9 or 5 whatever may be depending upon the design of the pump the discharge volume is decided by the number of cylinders length of the stroke of the piston diameter of the cylinder this is called the swash plate which changes the angle between these two planes that which increases and decreases the volume of the discharge this is the shaft connected to the prime mover that is the engine or the motor and this top this is called as the governing unit this which governs the movement of this swash plate look at the animation of this pump this is the swash plate how this cylinders pistons will move to and fro along with the axial rotation you can see let us see one by one this is the piston made with a very hard steel and afterwards certain processing will be done chrome plating etc etc this particular is called the slipper and this is the piston the construction of the cross section of the pistons looks like this this is a tiny hole is given to allow certain amount of oil to lubricate this ball joint here this slipper is made of normally with a gun metal that is a bronze material all these slippers are placed on this swash plate because this complete pistons along with the slippers will slide over the swash plate when the this unit is rotating along with the shaft this complete unit this complete items will be always moving over this swash plate to minimize this friction this lubrication oil as well as the bearing material used in this particular slipper will be helpful in minimizing the piston in minimizing the wear and the arrangement of the pistons will be looking like this this one is the barrel inside the dotted surfaces or the cylinders and these are the pistons you can see this particular course of pistons is come forward here as this is in an angular shape the distant one is piston is here so the space available inside between the top cylinder and bottom cylinder there is a huge difference and the pistons are 
placed together over a plate they look like this the other side there will be one more plate will come to just lock this complete set after the pistons we can see some more components the barrel looks like this these splines are provided to this is the engine side these splines are provided to accommodate these splines of the shaft and each piston will be sliding will be seating in each cylinder here also the bearing surface is provided inside the cylinders to minimize the friction and wear the complete set is inserted here nine pistons nine cylinders 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 and as a unit this one is resting over the smash plate and the other end of the barrel or the cylinder housing this is called the port plate or the valve plate so one portion will act as the inlet port the other portion act as the exhaust port this is called the port plate or the valve plate always facing over the cylinder block this is the smash plate back side looks like this this is the half circle half circle different types of smash plates are available in the engines because this particular shape is given to rotate this slide to give the sliding movement of this complete plate over the bearings looks like this smash plate and this is the port plate or the valve plate this is the one gold one here this is the one so one side will be suction port the other side will be exhaust port how this flash plate work the flash plate move it will be like this imagine this is the flash plate here the pistons are placed through slippers and this movement change in the angle between these two planes will be done by this item called the servo piston or the governor you can see in this animation observe here this is the maximum flow with maximum angle and the flow is reduced the minimum angle further reduced and the v is zero and the flow will be zero this is the governor unit can see this is the smash plate how this governor unit works we will see an assembled pump looks like this imagine this is the discharge port and this is the suction one so oil from here goes to the system and from the system pressure line one more line is drawn and connected to this governor unit when the system pressure is build up the same pressure acts on this governor allowing this spool or valve move upwards and this pressurized oil comes and acts on this piston against the force of the spring against the force of the spring so when so the, that makes this piston to move forward moving this smash plate against this force of the spring when this flash plate is moved on the top it is moved inwards in the bottom so when it is moved the angle between these two surfaces is minimized when the angle is minimized automatically the discharge volume also will be minimized and when the system requires more pressure again because of the reduction in the pressure pressure yield is released here this pools travels downside and the pressure is released even from this piston also here and because of the pressure stored in this compressed spring pushes this flash plate back side so that increasing the angle here so the when the angle is increased here again the discharge is increased like that 
depending upon the system's requirement if the system needs more oil it pumps more oil if the system needs less oil it pumps less oil that continuous variation is taken care by this swash plate movement this swash plate movement is governed by the unit called hydraulic governor or servo piston in the present generation hydraulic pumps this complete job is done through the electronic sensors and solenoids so which is more precise than this mechanical governing unit so the main advantage of this pump again i repeat the discharge volume from this variable displacement axial piston pump will be depending upon the system requirement it will not be uniform okay that is point number o so the stress on the pump is minimized whenever more oil is required the more oil is pumped whenever it is not necessary the less amount of oil is pumped another important advantage of this axial piston pump is there will be very very minimum fluctuations or pulsations or negligible pulsations in the oil flow because one after the one the suction and delivery is being done because of this axial movement of the pistons again we can see how this works here in this animation the most important one is the maintenance of this pump it is very essential to use only the recommended grade of hydraulic oil because the axial piston pumps are manufactured with high precision and the tolerances between the moving parts like piston and barrel and other moving parts are very very minimum so it is essential to use only recommended grade of oil and also the recommended grade of filters and also to replace the oil and filter as per the recommendation from the original equipment manufacturers delaying in oil and filters replacement also leads to the premature failure of the pump it is also suggested to have the oil sampling at regular intervals which indicates any internal wear of the pump parts so well in advance so that we can avoid the pumps from the major damage by addressing the issue at early stage go through these three phase of uh, four phase of notes in case you have any queries you can contact me through the email